soldiers of shoot. General Stames here with Hollywood Edwards. Hollywood, welcome back, soldiers of shoot. And here we are. We just talked the other day about not doing a show together, just you and I. And now we're back together hmm, a couple days later. It would appear so. I believe, what, three days later? So we have a show here that we're going to be talking about AEW. AEW. Uh, Chris Jericho did a podcast where he had as his guest, Tony Khan. Of course, Tony Khan is the man in AEW. And it was a very, I thought, very good interview, answered a lot of questions. And we're going to get into this because, bro, I don't know how much you've noticed, how much you're watching out there. There seems like there's this this conflict going on between, I don't know, is it pro-WWE people and anti-WWE people where it's almost like back in the days where, where you and I did the Rise of Liberty podcast, and we're going way back, but we were into the politics and all of that. It's almost like the Democrats and Republicans at each other online. What is... What's your take on that? You know what my take on that is? <clears throat> my take is that it is a uh, pack mentality. It's tribalism. We, we used to talk about tribalism all the time. I think tribalism is in every single aspect of our society. And this is more of tribalism. Now, why is the bigger question. Why? I mean, do you love WWE that much? Do you hate independent wrestling? Do you hate the fact that it's a previous WWE worker that's basically leading the charge here in Cody Rhodes? That's that's the bigger question, but you can definitely see on social media that the tribes have now formed, for sure. I, I can make sense in my head of tribalism where it has to do with politics because you're talking about two separate ideologies. People are thinking, in some respects, the exact opposite about certain topics, mm. certain issues. But in the realm of professional wrestling, I don't understand that. The reason I don't understand it is if we're all wrestling fans and we care about the business we want the business to thrive. We want it to grow. And the more competition there is, one would think, the better that would be for the business. And we'll get into all that. Better for the boys and girls and better for the fans, one would think. All right, let's get into the interview. Hollywood, the first thing that I want to kick this off with is this. As Jericho is talking to Tony Khan. The one thing that comes out throughout this interview is the fact that Tony Khan is, was, and seems like forever will be a fan of professional wrestling. When I hear him talk about that, it excites me. I take that as a positive. When I go to the internet, those fans who are anti-AEW use it as a negative. He's not a fan of professional wrestling. He is a mark. What is going on there? What is the mentality there where some people are seeing him as a fan of professional wrestling, and that's a positive, and some people are seeing him as a mark? I think that a lot of it has to do with being the cool kid in the classroom. That's what I think it is. I think there, you will see that guy that will immediately crap on whatever's cool. And I think some of those guys that are out there crapping on AEW is because it is cool. Uh, and I don't think that they like the bomb that AEW has set off in the wrestling community. Because, you know, for better or worse, we've seen this with TNA. As a matter of fact, we are seeing uh, the sheep comment on social media. Yes. All AEW fans are just sheep, and, you know, Cody is the sheep herder, apparently. It takes me back to about, I don't know, seven, ten years ago when TNA fans were dealing with this same, very exact same thing. They would get heat from WWE fans because Dixie's a money mark. Um, Samoa Joe and AJ aren't cool. 
you know, whatever you need to say to crap on it. And the TNA fans would fire back at these haters and they would say, you're just a sheep. You're a Vince McMahon sheep. Well, now they're switching gears. They're flipping the script here. This is their opportunity to shit on something again. That's cool that they think is Dixie Carter again. They think it's the same thing, so now it's their turn. They're going to be on the attack here and call AEW sheep. I think that's where that's coming from, honestly. Hmm. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that WWE fans know the whole the whole process of the alternative, the whole presentation of AEW and Tony Khan saying, we're going to offer an alternative. The wrestling fans want an alternative. I think that that's a big part of it, too. They don't want their alternative, but they know that the AEW fans are right. They just don't want to admit they're right because they they know damn well every time they turn on Raw, they're going to get a three-hour snooze fest. But they don't want to admit that those people are right. And again, it's, it's, it's a tribal thing, bro. And it's crazy. It's crazy. I don't know, like, for you and I, we keep talking... How is this bad for professional wrestling? This is a good thing for professional wrestling. How can you crap on that? And dude, let's let's explain something right now. This is Hollywood Edwards. You're hearing me. This is what I want to explain to you because I did see a, a, some prominent YouTubers out there in the wrestling community say things like, oh, these AEW fanboys, they're calling themselves fans of a product that they haven't seen yet, and there's no TV show, and we don't know what it is yet. How can you call yourself a fan? On and on and on, okay? We're a fan of the idea right now. We're a fan of how they're handling it right now. We are not wishing for WWE's death. Let me make that clear. We are not wishing for WWE and Vince McMahon's death. By supporting AEW. As a matter of fact, I want the opposite. Back in the Attitude Era, I was a WWF fan. And WCW can go screw themselves. I was a part of the WWF tribe. And you know why I stopped wrestling, watching wrestling? It was because WCW and ECW was all bought up by Vince McMahon. And it got stale and boring and there was no competition. And I dropped off. I stopped watching it. I don't want that to happen again. What I do want to happen is Monday Night Raw, because they lost some talent, because they're getting pushed by AEW, I want them to start booking in a sense that matters, okay? And, and what, what, I, what do I mean by that? Becky Lynch tapping to Asuka. Becky Lynch putting herself in the Royal Rumble. The storyline guy of Fit Finley entering her in the Royal Rumble when his television character doesn't even have the authority to do so. But we're just going to forget all that, okay? That's one example. If they have competition, we're not going to see story holes like that all over the place, which is going to make their product better. On the flip side, you're going to have another company to watch probably on a different night on television, and you're going to be able to root for them too. We're going to be able to go back and forth and compare what's better, who did this, who's booking, whose booking was better, which main event was better. They can push each other to a level at this stage we haven't seen in 20 plus years. That's what you should be rooting for. I'm not rooting. I just want to go on record. I'm not rooting against Vince and the WWE. I want it to be better. And if that takes Cody Rhodes and Tony Khan and the Young Bucks to do that, then I'm okay with it. And it probably should be mentioned that Tony Khan actually makes that point, and we'll get to it. He's not rooting for the demise of the WWE either. Right. Here's my... So pro wrestling has been stuck in this stale place, we'll call it, for nearly two decades now, since the WWE bought out, as you just alluded to, the ECW and WCW. So now we see the AEW coming in. We have... Again, and, and you know, Captain Aswai has, has said this several times on his shows. This is not Dixie Carter coming in. This is Ted Turner. We're talking about people who have money, who know business. Uh, these people, Tony Khan in particular, knows professional wrestling. Isn't it time to get competition back? 
how to the haters could this be a bad thing for pro- pro- for professional wrestling do they not remember when it was you know the WWE WWF versus WCW and ECW and we had all those choices and it was so much fun at the time like are these people who are hating, were they not around? Were they too young during that time? Are we talking about just, you know, the younger people who are or who are saying all this anti-stuff against AEW? Because if you were around during that time when all of those products were thriving, you have to have fond memories of wrestling, professional wrestling at that time, don't you? Yes. Yeah, I think that's probably a part of it. A lot of people on social media... And and it, it's a it's a glaring difference between guys that remember it and lived it, like myself, Captain of Swag, you, and these younger people that are tweeting about you know uh, sheep 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 sheep. That's all you got, really, really. Sheep 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 sheep. Bro, they don't remember. Probably because they were too young. Now, we know that generation of people, specifically guys and gals in their early 30s, sometimes things don't actually happen that were in reality because it happened before they were born. They have that mentality. I'm not going to go back and watch Dusty Rhodes versus Ric Flair because it's so grainy and it looks like shit. I'm not going to I'm not going to justify wasting time watching that even though it's you know one of the greatest feuds in wrestling history. That's the mentality. So just pretend it doesn't exist because it doesn't affect my life. And I I I bring that up for a specific point. And he knows who he is. When he's hearing this, he knows who he is. Bro, the fact of the matter is this. Back in the day, they all pushed each other. The whirlwind that that set off I'm talking about 8 o'clock Monday night. As a WWF fan, I turned on Nitro. Okay? And it was the dirty little secret because I was the WWF fan. I didn't want to admit that I liked some of the guys in the first hour. Chris Jericho actually being one of them. I would call the doc after wrestling, you know, and I'd be like, yo, that Jericho's pretty good, though. You know, and he'd be like, yeah, I know. But it's WCW, so we had to, like, say it tongue-in-cheek because we were on the other team. (laughs) We were on the other team, you know, and then you go back to raw and then you catch up on the, uh, the dirt sheet newsletters about what you missed on nitro with the NWO, you know, and then you're thinking to yourself, man, maybe next week I do need to turn on nitro and just leave it on for nine just to see what Hogan's going to say when he comes out with Nash and Hall, you know, And, and then you start doing that stuff. You find yourself going back and forth and then you get to a point where you're taping the other show. And I say tape because VCRs, right? Right. <laughs> so you had to get it all. And then, oh, by the way, there was this other outlaw rebel group called ECW who they embraced what they were, which was the hardcore style. And it's amazing because before you know it, WCW and WWF added a hardcore division. They started scooping up the hardcore talent. That is one guy, Paul E., Pushing, pushing. I still don't know how they did it, bro. Bunch of no-name guys going out there doing what they did and changing the business by by influencing that to a point where the other two major companies followed their little outlaw rebel suit by adding the hardcore to their main shows. This is what AEW is doing. This is the change that we're talking about. And a lot of the people out there that are too young to remember, too young to actually know the feeling of what was going on back then, that's what they're missing with AEW. So Tony Khan at one point in the interview actually made the point that the shows don't have to be on at the same time competing. In fact, he went on to say that, you know... alluded to the fact that he would rather that we put more shows on more nights of the week so there's more wrestling for people to watch. Mm -hmm. He talked about high-budget, high-quality wrestling. If we get this, okay, so we'll have 
Monday Night Raw on Monday. Maybe we'd have, and we talked about this before, maybe we'd have AEW in the middle of the week on Hump Day on Wednesday, and it seems like SmackDown is going to be on Fox on a Friday night. NXT at some point in time is going to come to FS1, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Bro, there's a there's a legitimate shot here that you could have four high quality, high production, high budget wrestling shows every week. Four high budget shows all competing for fans. Bro, we have a chance to see the millions come back. Or Maybe bring in people that weren't a part of those millions, youngsters who were too young to to be a part of that WWF, WCW, ECW thing that was going on almost 20 years ago. That could happen again. And I I think our point to all the fans out there, wrestling fans out out there, are just be a wrestling fan and enjoy that. Instead Instead of picking a side and killing one side or the other, why not root for all of it to be good that we are so inundated with good wrestling, good productions, and good products that, that you know, our head is spinning? I'll take it a step further and add ROH and New Japan. I was watching Axis TV last night. I was watching a movie, and they kept showing the commercial for New Japan. Apparently, they have a lineup where... They just debuted a new show called Women of Wrestling. I think it's WOW they're yes. going by. I I have no idea what this is. I don't know who runs it. I don't know who owns it. But Tessa Blanchard was the one getting pushed on the commercial. So you're talking actually five nights a week. Okay. Five nights a week. It's We've a never. Great time. I I mean that's that's beautiful. This could be a great time to be a fan of professional wrestling. All right, let's get into this interview now. Uh, let's get into it. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. The first question that, and the interview's a little choppy in in this flow, but there was there was a a question of why now? Why is now the time for this to happen? Tony Khan has had this idea for several years. But right now is the time. And he did bring up some examples of why. He talked about the fact that now you can see that there are advertisers who realize that the professional wrestling fan does exist, that they're intelligent, that they're out there, and that they buy products. So there is an advertising uh, avenue for professional wrestling. He got into the fact that the contracts that they were watching and they saw that 2019 was a year that a lot of the boys and the girls contracts were coming up. And he also talked about how uh, live sports on TV networks are very much sought after today. And he thought that those three factors, along with some smaller things as well, was the reason why now was the time. And he did allude to the fact that all in went as good. He was watching all in to see how that would do. Mm -hmm. And he saw the buzz and thought that when the iron was hot, now was the time to jump. Do you have any opinions or thoughts about any of those things in the why now aspect of this? Uh, Yes. First, I just want to go on record just in case Chris Jericho would hear this show. I didn't think it was choppy at all. I thought it was a masterpiece because it's Chris Jericho. <laughs> okay. That being said, um, yeah, he Tony Khan mentioned, uh, and maybe you remember specifically what he said, but it was uh, live TV, the NFL. Yes. What do you, what do you say? Like forty out of the top fifty. Shows? Yeah, I think you said 23 of the top 25, 40, 45 of the top 50, and 90 or 91 of the top 100 shows every year are NFL football games. Right. Bro, that is unbelievable. That's crazy. So, so yeah, if you are going to do a sports-oriented show, which means it's either sports or it's uh, scripted sports, whatever you want to say. Like the got, NFL. Like the NFL, exactly. Hashtag Drew Brees. Uh, Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want to go live, and the I gotta tell you, dude, it was very 
very uh, pleasing to hear him say that because I was I was worried. And this is a shot at Ring of Honor. It is a shot at Ring of Honor. The reason that I have a problem watching Ring of Honor anymore is because I know what's going to happen because they tape so far in advance. I I was just hearing or I saw something about Jeff Cobb won a tournament and a title and they're tweeting about it and it's not on their show because they have like three or four shows in the can before they can even record it. Right. I was very concerned that AEW was going to do that in a move to save money. But it's listening a lot cheaper. Yeah, of course, you're right. TNA's done it for years, but if you look at the their ratings, TNA and ROH both Impact, I should say, Impact and ROH both. It's a problem, and you can't survive in a climate of live television. So I am very happy that uh, that Tony Khan did announce that. And the production, he said it's going to be high-quality production, and Jericho went on to say that you know, he knows six to eight people that he has working uh, on their production team. He Jericho already knows. He worked with them. So they're, they're obviously past names in wrestling, which is good. Experience, right? Yeah, and they also mentioned the fact that, you know, without saying it, but they kind of did say it, the TV deal, that's coming. That's a done deal.